gentlemen, welcome to another episode here on Passage. It's getting such a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for coming by today. So, what have we got to talk about? Oh, I have one of the things I'm realizing. I've got people's messages popping up on my screen here. Uh, what have we got to talk about today? What have we got to talk about here on the pastiche of skin? It's related to Sony and uh, recent rumors of Last of Us 2 coming out on PS4 and PS5. I saw that going like, that's a no-brainer. The Last of Us was a huge, huge release for the PS3. And also its remaster was a console seller for the PS4. Uh, impressively so because it was actually a good visual a good a good example of a visual storytelling expanded upon by having a little bit more power at your disposal and obviously with the next one coming out it being a branching or like actually timeline wise expecting it to come out around by that time and i keep saying like well it'll be on one and it'll be on the other it's a no-brainer but what we have now is a little bit more of a cemented idea of what's going to be happening with the ps5 in the most recent generation but the upcoming generation and a bit of a timeline of what we could possibly imagine seeing uh, announcements if not an actual release date for the ps5 so according to a number of sources uh they'll be in the description below the video i don't have access to these directly uh so everything i have is territory secondary information from other news sources other locations that have actually been talking about this uh, talking about the uh, prospective specs and talking about the uh, dev kits being available and uh, thoughts and imaginings of what time and when this console will come out. But for anybody who's a Sony user, it's kind of important to know because uh, would, should I go and spend money on a PS4 Pro now, knowing that the next iteration is on its way? Is the next iteration going to be backwards compatible with the PS4? We don't have answers for that either. Is the next iteration going to be just an iteration of the PS4 with a little bit more RAM, a little bit better processor, a little bit faster speed? And I, some of these questions, some of these questions we can answer now. <clears throat> so that question of iteration, uh, the PS4 to PS4 Pro, essentially an iteration that was there to take advantage of 4K televisions, 4K broadcasting, and uh, sources that could actually produce a larger quality, higher quality image. That made sense whenever you're doing that. We're past the point of the tipping to 4K era. Nearly everybody I know who actually keeps up to deal with their hardware owns a 4K television, even if they don't watch anything in 4K. Um, personally, me, I'm still in 1080p land. I haven't actually upgraded to it, and I still use an original PS4. Maybe the next step is what I will do when the next one comes out. So will they want to actually ignore the people who have already made that transition across? I have the, of the opinion that Sony will not. They will not want to actually see PS4 games not playable on the PS5. And majority of the reason that'll be is not because they want to try and make money from you again, but more that they just... The structure, the way the game consoles are made now compared to the way they used to be made is that we are iteratively working our way up to being essentially PCs, where we're mid-range PCs rather than actually being a top-of-the-range gaming console. It's a, a standardization of hardware that just allows people to actually get the most out of them. And the reason why you can almost have semi-competitive results that are with PCs. So with the PS5, essentially what we're going to be seeing is an increased processor, increased RAM, and probably a faster hard drive. You know, the, the three things that will actually allow you to access data faster, make it sense of that data faster, and be able to put more of that data on your screen at the same time. That, that's literally what it comes down to for anybody who doesn't really care about the hardware. For the people who do care about the hardware, the rumors are is AMD, because Sony have already been with AMD for their last iteration for the last two consoles. Makes no sense to change if they've got a good lucrative deal going on. And it is either Zeus or Nadi Mari. I can't remember what the actual next one is. There's ones that actually haven't landed yet, hardware-wise. So there is uh, the Ryzen Core, the Zeus Core, and then a third one, which is actually meant to be uh, launch later on this year. Uh, if you want to really know about those, I highly recommend Linus Tech Tips. He'll probably be talking about them in the near future. But the uh, Zeus cores, the eight, eight core Zeus processors that they are talking about being in the PS5 uh, already exist and they are already actually in development units that have actually been sent out to developers for the purposes of making games for it. And because of this, the, this piece of hardware already being out, and already being in the wild and actually being used and programmed onto. We're talking about timelines now of when games will be ready. Not 
if we're going to have the console, but when the games are ready, will that be when the console releases? And given the genuine, general cycles of most console development companies and the way games have actually been iteratively done, mattering on who you are, if you're a Ubisoft, you're doing a new game every year, generally, uh, especially in your main series of like Assassin's Creed or whatever else. Uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, trying to think of all the ones off the top of my head, Far Cry, you know, they're, they're iterating out a game of those every year and a half to two years, easily enough. Companies like Bethesda, three, four years between their games. You know, there's companies who are building stuff like this on a regular basis so that they know they have to have a launch window. And that leads us to what time can we expect a PS4 or PS5 to release? Uh, so the earliest uh, anticipation people are having is a late 2018 release. So at the end of this year, we'd have a PS5, which doesn't sound right in a lot of ways. Um, for, if you're going to launch a console, and literally a new iteration of this console, you'd want to actually be at the dip of your current success to kind of reinflate that attention. You'd actually not want to be scheduling a number of releases coming up to the launch of the device because people are going to go like, well, why don't I get the PS5 version of this? And then those game sales affected as well. With God of War, um, Spider-Man, uh, what else is actually really big coming out this year? Detroit Becoming Human, which to be honest, I don't think it's going to be a massive, massive game. Uh, but these kind of uh, titles have actually got a lot of push behind them, a lot of marketing behind them. Sony wouldn't want to screw over those companies. They wouldn't want to actually screw over the partners that they've had. They wouldn't want to actually make themselves an a comfortable platform to be on. So you have to take into account that these are going to probably dictate when the console itself will come out. So if we have scheduled releases up until, well, with Spider-Man specifically, September of this year, where is that window whenever you announce, announce the console? If you, you're not going to announce it, say, this month, then when are you going to actually start building the hype? And that's where the feeling begins, where we'll probably expect a announcement between September and November. In September, October, November, where we'll get told PS5, you're going to see one of those at this time of the year. And that's, um, that's, not, that's, not, that's not unexpected. That's what uh, pretty much, that's structured as far as I can remember timeline-wise around the PlayStation experience. PlayStation experience is in November time each year. I can't even remember. I, I've done it for like the last couple of years as a live broadcast, and I don't even remember when it actually is. But you're chatting there. There's a number of key winter events that they could actually announce PS5 at. And that leads to, what, a year's development cycle of hype, announcement of games, preparation for release. And we could maybe, most likely, 70% chance to see a PS5 in 2019, uh, fall 2019. But with the timing of it, it's a very awkward time, I imagine, with the length of console life. The PS4 Pro hasn't been around for quite as long as they might have wanted it to be around. You could be seeing a spring 2020 or even a fall 2020 release, mattering whether or not they actually have the, the units to release or the actual, like, they've got them built and they have the content to put onto them already and available. It does tie in a little bit with how they've been talking about PS Plus for the last year or so with the removal of PS3 and PS Vita titles from the PS Plus uh, free games. They're essentially, they will be leaving that behind in February, end of January 2019. And that it could be just the open up space, especially with the fact there's very few games going out release for it. Uh, really set up space so that you'll have your PS4 titles and your PS5 titles sitting side by side. PS4, PSVR, PS5 titles, that'll be their branch and their umbrella of what PS Plus will include and in its free titles from that point onwards. Uh, possibility of whenever the 5 comes out, they could very well encourage people to actually go like, get this on PS4. If you're a PS Plus member, you get the PS5 upgrade for free. I mean, it's not a stupid idea. It works very well. Essentially, it means people are upgrading games that they already own, literally for texture packs. And uh, for sometimes, some of those games will, most of those games won't charge for it, but to actually have that data kind of loaded down from the PSN servers, it would be a very smart move on their part to make it sound like they're giving us something by doing that. It's a, it's a, that one's for yourself, Zony, for free. You can take that idea with. But the PS5 has basically all we know 
is that dev units are out that the processor is probably going to be an AMD 8 core processor of its most recent two uh, iterations of its processor series and that we could expect it between fall 2018 and fall 2020. So what did we learn today? Other than stuff goes out of date, new things will be coming, be prepared to buy it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's essentially all Sony have already kind of, or all the, all journalism has actually told us about the actual PlayStation environment as it is right now. We are not going to learn anything about this. We're not going to really see anything massively impressive in the next short while. In fact, we're still talking about uh, games for the PS4 Pro being locked at 30 frames a second or reduced, uh, f uh, reduced resolutions for games because they can't be handled on the current hardware. We'll see the numbers whenever the consoles get better announced. But as it is now, we are at the end of a console generation. We are very much aware we're at the end of a console generation. And um, five years. Was it five years since the release of the original PS4? Five or six. That's, that's, uh, that's good innings for any console so far in the last uh, few generations. We had a very long freeze from the PS3 and the Xbox 360 where I think it was seven and a half, eight years before the next ones were announced, let alone actually released. But we've had a very, very similar cycle length uh, to, our, to most other consoles where it's like three and a half, four years. Uh, any of us who actually are still on our first consoles of that generation, um, I, I'm, I'm still on the same original PS4 that I got whenever they released out. We have had a lot less of the fault issues. A lot of people have had less problems about uh, failures. We are at the point now where we have stability in our consoles from birth. So I could see myself very well becoming a PS5 user from the early days of release just because I've, outside of their general rushes and having bad units, as always happens, I haven't had to run into an issue yet. Any still needs to so yeah, PS5. Not uh, people saying PS5 did 2018 release date. Not a chance. There's like there's basically no way. If if I am wrong about that, then come back to this video, laugh at me, and tell me that I have to do some sort of lunatic dare to actually make up for the fact that I I I, I threw my eggs into all the basket and they got smashed and I got egg on my face and some my shiver because there's no way. PS5 is coming out in 2018. We possibly fall 2019 with that possibility. In fact, I personally think it's going to be fall 2019. Just, uh, just timeline-wise, it feels like it's the right time if we're talking about it a year and a half before the time. Like that's uh, that, that feels about round about right to me. Uh, every other console previously kind of like you had ones that were long, 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 long talk about. Sony, they they they'll, they'll have a new one out. Well, how long did we know it? We knew about the PS4 Pro iterations the year the PS4 came out, and it was four years before they actually like that can hit the market where we had the Slims and we had the PS4 Pros. There was already talk about them back at the launch. So to have a game console being announced now, we hope it's actually within local time or new time or soon time, but we could be looking at another four years before release just because they'll change hardware halfway through because they might find an issue. We don't know. We don't know what it is currently, but we know that at least developers have got dev kits in their hands, and that will lead them down the garden path. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts, you have any feelings, you have any concerns, you have any questions about the PS5 and where the PS4 is going, then let's have a conversation in the chat below. You can always get a hold of me in Discord. The link will be underneath. You can always get a hold of me in the comments underneath the videos. You can always get a hold of me on the Facebook page. There's plenty of places where we can have this conversation. I want to have this conversation. I believe we need to have this conversation because anybody we know that doesn't already play on PlayStation, should they join now? Or should they wait until the next one? I'm of the opinion that they should join now. I'm of the opinion that they should get on the PS Plus as soon as possible, even if they don't own the goddamn console and just get the free games. So whenever you do own the console, you have a library to play with. But that's my mentality whenever it comes to Sony games. You know, I am a man who collects way too many of them that I could ever get to play, obviously. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all very, very soon. We'll be back into more production-y kind of like same stuff like this on the channel very, very soon. If you haven't been uh, seeing any of these kind of videos, 
it's because you've been watching the live streams and the live streams have actually been long plays of a few games that i'm actually looking forward to playing more of we will be hopefully back with full commentary and camera on the live plays and long plays in the future it's just been live so thank you very much for watching and i will see all you dudes in the next video bye